started. I am so excited to be back here with you today in High Performer Lifestyle. You may have heard my dog just bark in the background, but I was on vacation and I am back. Happy uh, Thanksgiving to those of you in the U.S. who celebrate Thanksgiving. Hi, Isidro. Good morning. And uh, whoever else is just hopping on, I wanted to give you guys a couple of minutes. I was just showing my cup that says, I don't know Google, my wife knows everything. <laughs> I love that cup. My daughter bought it for my husband. And of course, I'm using it. So I am so excited to talk to you today. Um, and to just dive in for the rest of this week, what we're going to be talking about this week, we're just going to be getting getting real, okay? Um, yesterday was my anniversary. I was uh, married 11 years to my husband together, 13 years. And like one of the things that thinking about being married brought up for me is how vulnerable, how vulnerable you have to be in relationship with people to have real relationship, right? To have any kind of meaningful relationship. So um, what I want to share with you today is something that will support you if you have ever struggled with, with being seen, right? Like with being real about who you are, um, with being vulnerable. And that's what we're going to talk about. And I have struggled with that. Um, and it continues to be something that I actively work on, right? That I make it a priority. Um, in my life that I practice. And the truth is, I wish I would have learned this sooner, but it's never too late, right? And I am convinced that the way for any of us to become a better partner, a better parent, a better friend, a better boss, a better employee, a better teammate, a better business person, if you're a business owner like I am, especially if you're a coach or a leader or a mentor or anything, um, in that in that arena, like the key for any of us to become better at that is for us to be as raw and as vulnerable as we possibly can. Now, if you would have told me that 10 years ago, even five years ago or three years ago, I would have been like, eh, I don't know how I don't know how um, how convinced I am. Or even if I knew it, do you ever know something like intellectually you get it? but you still don't know how to step into it or you still pretend that you're being vulnerable, um, but you know that inside you're not, right? So what does it even mean to, to be raw, to be vulnerable? Well, it means putting ourselves out there, putting ourselves out there on the front line, right? Right now, this is the front line, right? It's Facebook Live. Um, I used to go Facebook, I used to go live on my business page where I was live and raw in front of everyone. Now it's here in this group. It's the same thing when I host a workshop or, you know, I, I do a training or anything like that, right? That's an example of putting yourself out there. However, it doesn't mean that because you're out there, you actually are truly being vulnerable and being raw. And that's the challenge that I've come up with, um, a come up against in my own life and in my business. And it's the challenge that most of my clients and people that, that hire me struggle with, right? It's like we are we typically are hard workers. We know how to put our head down and get it done. Typically, we had some kind of background that had us develop a tough exterior or put up a certain front or a certain wall, whatever that is. I'll share a little bit of mine. But you're successful, right? But you struggle with like really being vulnerable really showing your weaknesses, right? Really talking about and, and putting your finger on and exposing your fears, even your screw ups, right? Because that's the only way that we get to humble ourselves, truly, right? That's the only way that we humble ourselves is when we, we step out, we share who we are and we ask for support. Not just ask, like, how can I be better at this? Oh, I see somebody who's really good at this thing. How can I ask them for support in an in a honest and vulnerable way? Not just in what can I get from that person, but like, hey, I see you know, that you're really good at connecting and being honest and, and being a good listener. And you know what? I'm not, right? I wish I was better at that. And so can you support me? And then 
How do we actually allow ourselves to receive the support? Here is what I know has come up for me, right? Is, and it shows up for all of us differently. Where I have struggled, and this is me being vulnerable, not only in my relationship, I talked about yesterday was my um, uh, 11 year married anniversary, um, but it's where I've struggled in all my relationships, personal relationships, and then of course carry it into my businesses. I'm on my fourth business now. But where I've struggled is with receiving, with receiving. If you're somebody who is a doer, a go-getter, you're strong, you're the person that most people come to maybe in your friends, in your circle, you guys connecting with this, let me know. Um, you know, if you're that person who just knows how to get on with it and get over it, typically you've come from some kind of um, past where you've had to put on that exterior or had to develop that tough uh, skin as a child. Um, and if that's you, and, and a lot of my clients, we all have this in common, then it's easy for you to do, to get caught up in the busyness, to, to not want to waste time with emotions and all that stuff, right? I mean, I'm guilty of that. And what happens is we rob ourselves of actually being on the receiving end. And that can look like being on the receiving end of anything, of anything. It could be being on the receiving end of like taking, taking real solid advice that you've asked for, um, but you're not allowing it in, right? Because you, we've got our defense up and we don't want to look weak. We don't want to look like I didn't know that. It could mean for me, for instance, I've had a history <laughs> as of, now this is me being really vulnerable, um, I've had a history as a business owner and as a boss to not actually, this may surprise you, to not actually hold my employees or my teammates um, accountable, right? To not hold them accountable, to not truly ask for what it is I need and allow myself to actually receive that support, right? Like, and I'm not picking on them. I'm saying this comes from my leadership, right? My history of my leadership being that, right? To, to actually ask for what you want and what you need and to hold someone accountable, not in a bossy way, like that actually takes you being vulnerable enough to, to, to let people see what you really need, right? And to not just get in there and do it for them. And here's where it gets a little deep, right? Like, hey, stay in here with me. What I realized, because I'm like, how could this be? I'm so direct, you know, but it's one thing to like say, do this, that, 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 and the other, right? We talked before about not, not um, setting goals that are like a checklist that you just check off. We talked about it being connected to a bigger vision. It's the same thing here, right? It's not about just telling your spouse, this is what I want, this is what I need, or telling your teammates or your employees or your friends, right? It's literally about, do you actually allow yourself to soften up enough to get intimate enough with yourself and with others to truly let them see you that you can actually ask for what it is that you want. And then like be aware enough to know that when somebody is trying to give that to you, right? So here's what I uncovered for me. Stay with me, this is connecting somewhere. This is what I uncovered for myself. And I share this because I hope it has you, you know, I'm a deep thinker, has you look deeper at where your lack of vulnerability or um, you know, lack of realness and being raw and all of that. Like, where does it really come from? And here's where I realize mine comes from. It comes from childhood. It comes from childhood where I did not believe because of what was going on in my life growing up, I d now this may not be true, but as children, we decide certain things based on what we're experiencing. And of course, as children, we have a limited capacity to actually um, make real sense of it, right? We go on our emotion at the moment. And so I developed this belief that the adults around me couldn't really handle serious things, 
right? Like they couldn't handle things. I experienced the adults around me in breakdown, right? That's a term we use in leadership. And as a young child, I developed this exterior, this really tough exterior and, and this, I can do it. I can handle it. In fact, when bad things are happening to me, I don't even need to tell them, right? When bad things are happening to me, when I'm being abused, um, and when I'm being sexually abused, right? When things are going on in the home that people need to know about or somewhere else outside the home, I, I'm not going to tell them. I can take it. I can handle it. They can't. And so I carried that with me, of course, all my life until I started to realize it. And then when you realize it, you start to realize, whoa, this is showing up in so many places. So like circling back to, um, you know, my, that the fact that yesterday was my anniversary. One of the things I sent out in pocket coaching to some of my clients was the fact that, and these are clients who are all entrepreneurs. It was the fact that what, what you need inside of your marriage to survive, you also need in your business, right? Commitment, <laughs> commitment. Like we get that, right? We need commitment. Meaning like, it's not just when we feel like it, that we give our time and attention to our marriage. It's not just, you know, when our passion is up because passion ebbs and flows. It's like, we're all in, right? So that's like the number one thing that's going to have your marriage survive and commitment to you know, making it better and doing all of those things that are necessary. It's the same thing in your business. It's the same thing. Now, what I didn't touch on in that because it wasn't relevant for that particular um, topic and what I'm touching on now is it's the same thing in a relationship and in a marriage that you also need in your business is the ability to be vulnerable and real, especially in this day and age. Gone are the days, if you have an online business, where you can just make all these beautiful videos that are, that are just scripted and the best lighting and the best, see, and it's like uh, over, like people don't want that anymore. They wanna see who you are raw, real, and live. They don't care that you don't speak correctly or that, you know, your, you know, your hair is not perfect. Like they want to see you, the real you. We are all craving connection, deep personal connection. We are all craving the ability for others to show up and be vulnerable and be real because then it paves the way for us to do that as well. Some of us are just waiting for somebody else to go first, right? And so when I started to realize those patterns, and I, I encourage you to look for those patterns in your own life where you might be holding back because you don't want to share with either your audience on Facebook or in your blog or on, with your clients, or you don't want to share with your husband, or you don't want to share with somebody who's who is maybe close to you, but maybe not even close to you. You don't want to share like the things about you that are ugly, that are dark. Or in my case, it was more about not sharing the parts of me that felt un like exposed, unprotected, right? Because as a child, those were the things that had me be hurt and had me be abused, right? And so growing up, it was like, nobody's going to hurt me. Nobody is even going to see this, right? Like I'm just going to wear this exterior. And what happens is we don't even know we're doing it anymore. Do any of you relate to that? Like we don't even know we're doing it anymore. It becomes a second layer of skin just becomes how we're operating. And that's why learning how to interrupt patterns in our life is really what can save us. So I believe that the way for any of us to become better at what we're doing, right? B to be better in our relationships, to be better in our businesses, is for us to start being as raw and as real and as vulnerable as possible. I truly believe this. And what I know is that when you share in, in a way, when you expose certain things about yourself, or even when you just start to talk about it, even if it's not that comfortable to talk about it, I'm still working on how to talk about certain things um, that have me be vulnerable, right? Like, even if 
you're starting the conversation, you're moving the energy, you're getting it out of your body, you're getting it out of your mind, you're, you're letting it like free, right? So it doesn't own you anymore. And what happens in my experience when I work with clients on this is like it just starts to get easier and like layers start to come off. And then we get to with some clients I find because like I said, so many of my clients come with this you know, exterior. In fact, at our mastermind a couple of weeks ago in Arizona, one of the common themes that we saw revealed and it, it happened in different ways, whether it was in their business, whether it was as a parent. So many times in our circle, someone was sharing and they said, I didn't even realize I had the support. I didn't even realize that person was there for me all along. Or I didn't even realize that that was right there um, for my business. I didn't even realize that Jessica, that you had already sent me this and that had already responded to this or that you had already been helping me with this. It's like when your walls are up, you can't even receive what somebody is giving you or offering you. And so my invitation to you is the same invitation I've been giving to myself um, this year and that I will carry into 2020 is for me and for you to Ask yourself, am I being as real as I possibly can when I show up in my conversations? Am I being as real as I possibly can when I show up and do a Facebook Live for my audience or when I send an email or you know, when I'm on an enrollment conversation with someone who's potentially a client, right? Like, am I being real? Where can I be more honest about this? and start to catch the patterns right what are your patterns for me my patterns are like instead of sadness right some people get sadness i'll get anger and so that is like a, a, a red flag for me that somewhere something of my vulnerability is being exposed right and so it's an opportunity for me to just look in see what that is telling me and then move forward. So most of the time you guys hear me talking about mindset and mindset is a huge, it's huge part of everything that we do of definitely of being a high performer, definitely of getting what you want in life um, and being really, you know, audacious about your goals and your visions. Yes, that is so key. However, it's not just about getting over things We've got to go through them too, right? We've got to go through them to truly go over them and not have them like holding, holding us back where they're, they, we've stuffed them down, right? So here we're like experience the emotion, go through, go through the emotions that would have you be vulnerable or the awarenesses. And from there, that's how we truly get over things. And that's how we truly conquer things. It's not an ignoring or a squashing down like so many of us have done to be in survival mode, right? So yes, Catherine, am I being as real as I possibly can? So I'm looking forward to having more people live with us as the week goes on and people get uh, used to me being on here live again. And I want you guys um, to let me know if you want to be hot seated on Friday, uh, drop it here in the comments. Those of you on YouTube who are watching, um, you know how to do it there as well. And I will see you tomorrow live at 6.45. Hey, here's your call to action. Drop in the comments after you watch this. Drop in the comments how you're committed to being more vulnerable this week. And I'll come back and uh, have a conversation with you. Have a great day, everyone. I'm getting on an airplane to San Diego in a few hours. Bye.